Hey you guys, so my last video I talked about my business and my coaching philosophy and how that's really shifted and changed over the last few years. But I realized I didn't give an intro to myself, which is what I meant to do in the video and what I said I was going to do in the beginning. So I want to use this video to tell you guys more about myself and my journey. So I started my career in Silicon Valley. Um, I originally studied math and computer science and then I quit my job. I worked in Silicon Valley as a product manager at different tech companies for about three years. Then I quit my job to start my online fitness coaching business. Fitness and health has always been something really big in my life. Um, a lot of that happened when I was in middle school. I really started my fitness journey when I was in middle school and I developed eating disorders. Not a good way to start your fitness journey, but my family moved to rural New Hampshire. We lived in South Carolina, which was really diverse. And my family moved when I was 13 to rural New Hampshire. And I looked really different from everybody. I was the only Indian girl. I was at this new school. And y'all, middle school sucks, right? Middle school sucks for everybody. And when you're a girl, when you look different from everybody, I also hit puberty super early. So I had just all these curves and body hair and just, just did not feel that good about my appearance. And before that, I had gone to an all girls school. So none of this really mattered. Everybody was super nice. I had lots of friends. And I just had moved to this co-ed school. I was around boys for the first time. And I started to become hyper aware of my appearance. I started to really just be super, super anxious about making friends and how, what everybody was thinking of me. It was this time of hyper, hyper judgment. So I got it into my head for some reason that, you know, if, if only I was skinny, everybody would like me. I'd have friends immediately. And this was kind of what started that first eating disorder, which I've done a lot of blog posts on this already. So you, you can go read those. I'm just giving you an intro of how I, how I got into this whole world. It ended up getting to a point that it got really bad that I stopped getting my period, which is for a woman a really big sign of, of, you know, poor nutrition. So my mom took me to a dietitian, a nutritionist, dietitian, registered dietitian, who helped me really learn about nutrition. That was the first time I had ever really learned about nutrition and learned about what calories really are and how many I need and how to balance out my nutrition. And that was honestly a life-changing experience, which made me just fall in love with this field of nutrition and, and fitness. So that really helped me recover from that first eating disorder. I, at the time I hadn't done any therapy, although I wish in retrospect that I had worked with a therapist because eating disorder is it's the tactical, like knowing what to eat and, and the food part, but it's also all the mental work, which I didn't do at that time. Um, and it was fine at the time, but it ended up coming back. And at that point I saw a therapist and, and worked through all of it, all of it, all of it. So anyway, started with eating disorders, kind of got over them. In college, I struggled a lot again with my body image. Um, college again was at another time where, you know, you're in a new environment. And I think for a lot of women, a lot of bo our body image issues come up during college. Um, I know that, you know, it's it's different at every school, but some schools, especially if you're in a sorority, that can cause a lot of, lot of pressure around our looks. And it can be a time to de really develop a poor relationship with food. So for me, I, I did not have a great relationship with food and my body in my college. And my eating disorder habits came back again, this time with bulimia, which was not, not fun. And if you've ever struggled with that, I can definitely relate to you and I, and I hope you heal on your journey. Um, but I was always very athletic. So I played a lot of sports. I played, um, I did swimming, I did running, I did crew, like rowing. I was, I was really big into that. Um, I was captain of a lot of these teams as well. And then in college I did triathlon, I did cheerleading, which, which at the time was really fun. But in retrospect, I think for me personally, it was one of those sports that places a lot of emphasis on the way you look, which I think for me was not healthy uh, with my tendencies and all that. So anyway, post-college, I still just did not feel that confident in my body. Again, post-college is another big transition period where you're finding a new job and you're moving to a new place and you're in a new environment and you, it feels like everybody's kind of judging you and evaluating you. And for me, that was a time again that my eating disorder behaviors came up. Um, and at that time I worked with a fitness and nutrition coach who taught me even more about nutrition. And that's what really prompted me to become a personal trainer. I just learned so much about nutrition and my body and my body image. And I also started working with a therapist post-college um, because this was a time that I fell into the bodybuilding world. I competed in bodybuilding competitions. I uh, got really, really into like macros and tracking your macros. And again, like another thing that just puts so much emphasis on the way we look. 
and it was starting to become really unhealthy for me. So I started going to see a therapist. I started really just healing my relationship with food and body and um, using a lot of the skills I had learned to coach women on this as well. So just coach women on how to have a really good relationship with food, how to see exercise in a positive way, how to reach your health goals, even if those are fat loss, without like obsession and without having a negative relationship with food. Because I think for a lot of us who struggle with eating disorders, it's not a choice. It's, it's We always just fall into this world of dieting, which tells us to do these disordered things like burn off calories, which you don't need to do, and um, restrict your food, and make up for things, and all these vocabulary, it's actually very, very distorted and not healthy when you are thinking in that terms of like, food is bad, and I can't eat it, and I need to restrict. So anyway, um, I, that, that's kind of how my fitness journey started. I ended up, I was working in Silicon Valley. I ended up getting certified as a trainer and um, I started working with other clients as a nutritionist and a personal trainer on fit, fitness and nutrition. So I started my business about two years ago. Oh no, about a year and a half ago. Um, I've coached a hundred women since then. I've done one-on-one -on -one programs. I've done boot camps, online boot camps. I've done, I'm doing my first in-person event this weekend, uh, in Houston in Memorial Park. If you guys are watching and you're from Houston, Memorial Park this Sunday, we're going to be doing a workout in the park, free brunch, healthy brunch. Um, I'm going to be giving out free fitness goodie bags from some of my favorite brands. I'm super excited for this, but basically that's how we got to where we